toxins and why toxic chemicals are so important for us to know about um, and why we shouldn't be running out to the store and buying all the Lysol cans. Uh, because that's actually not so great for your health because you're breathing in the fumes, you're breathing in all those chemicals. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about that after we kind of get started. Um, so uh, welcome, welcome. I want to just tell you guys in this time of uncertainty, upheaval and stress, we really just need to come together and connect more than ever before to connect and to pause and just to slow down to take care of ourselves and really to do those things that support our wellness. And it's especially important now to really take action to do those things that help us stay above the wellness line rather than giving into the fear and the panic and the anxiety and negative thinking that really is going to lead us into a downward spiral and put us below that wellness line. A little bit more about me. Um, over the past eight-ish years, I've really started to be more conscious of the foods that I was eating and the products that I was using. And I'll bet many of you guys have started thinking about those things as well. And if you haven't started yet, you're going to start soon. I can guarantee it. This is where our world is going these days. And a big thing that I started doing over the past four and a half years since my son was born was really to start learning about all the toxins and the toxic chemicals that are found in so many of our conventional products. These toxins that are causing respiratory issues, fertility issues that are endocrine disruptors and carcinogens. And I really think that now more than ever, we need to be aware of these so that we aren't unknowingly spraying our houses, wiping our counters, cleaning our hands with these toxins and harming our health rather than supporting it. Because that's what we ultimately want is to support our health. That's why we're doing all of the cleaning, right? And the disinfecting and the whatever especially now that we have this health pandemic that's on the rise worldwide. We really need to be conscious. So before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit more about me. I'm Kylie, and I'm a mom of two. I have a four and a half year old son named Christian and a two year old named Evie. My kids and my family are really my why. Why I'm so passionate about reducing the chemicals in our homes and in the products that we use and why I'm also passionate about educating others about the importance of being aware of these toxins in our lives. Before I had kids, I thought I was conscious about what I ate, what products I used, but I was still using so many products that I've now learned are really not great for my health in general. Growing up, I used dryer sheets all the time and I loved the smell of fresh laundry. I didn't think twice about cleaners and such. It wasn't until I started becoming more conscious about first the foods I was eating, and then the products I was using when I was trying to get pregnant, I really started to clean things up. And shortly after getting married, my husband and I had suffered a miscarriage. And then following that, it took us over a year to get pregnant again. Because I was a bit older, we had decided to get fertility assistance at the time. And we both got checked out and I started seeing an acupuncturist for fertility treatments. It was this acupuncturist that first opened my eyes to the powerful healing and health benefits of essential oils. Well, I ended up getting pregnant about three months later after using these oils daily and I was doing other things. I was really decreasing my stress and just getting the fertility treatments with the acupuncture. Um, and I think all of these things combined really helped me get my body into a less of a stressed out state and just more positive. My vibration was higher as a result and also my hormones were being balanced. And I carried a healthy baby to term. And I had planned on using oils during labor and delivery with my first, but I totally forgot about them in the moment. But don't worry, I was able to do that with my second, which was lovely, but that is a story for another time. And basically, once the mom fog of newborn life had settled a bit and we moved and I was unpacking, I found these tiny little bottles. And I started to do more reading and research on how to use them because I had spent money on them and they were still full and I had no clue what to do. Um, and so this reading and researching on how to use these bottles led me to the whole area of learning about all the hidden toxins in pretty much all of the products that you buy at the store. Hey, Moira. Oh my gosh. Hey, Becca. <laughs> um hi everyone yay and I'm not even looking on Facebook I should be looking on Facebook too but I've got too many things going on so bear with me hi everybody that's watching on Facebook so anyway with all this new knowledge about what's actually in our products and having this new baby with precious and like fresh skin I that I knew I was responsible for keeping him safe and this is when really everything changed for me and my eyes were opened up 
And I think now with this COVID-19 pandemic, I think a lot of people's eyes are going to be opened up to more of this toxin-free living because it's so important for our health and our wellness. And now that we're cooped up inside, it's going to be even more important for you to be aware of. Um, so now I'm very passionate about toxin-free living, and this is what I do to help my family live their best life. And I'm also passionate about helping you and your kids and your family and your grandkids and all of my clients as well, if you're watching. And it's all a learning process. So don't stress about wherever you are at right now. So let's get started. Oops, what's going on there? I would like to start you guys all off with a little bit of a meditation. So I want you to sit in a comfortable position. Close your eyes and focus your attention on your breath. Breathing in and out, in and out. Now, as you continue to breathe in a relaxed manner, focus your attention on your heart space in the middle of your chest. Breathe into your heart and fill your heart with love and energy. As you continue to breathe, the love and energy expands getting larger and larger, filling your whole chest and possibly your whole body. You may associate some color with this love energy. Now send the love from your heart out into the center of the circle. This unites with the love from everyone else in the room with you maybe, and everyone else that's watching right now. And now send that love to someone who is maybe not present right now in your house or your apartment or the room that you're sitting in. Someone that you know who needs a little bit of extra love at this time. And now bring this love and energy back to yourself. Breathe in and out. Feel that love energy expand within you, filling your whole chest and your whole body. And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes. So that is actually called a heart meditation. And I thought that would be a really nice meditation to do, to just ground ourselves, to pause, to slow down and just release and be and find ourselves in a little bit more of a relaxed place amidst all of this craziness that is around us and sending love, sending love to all of you, sending love to yourself, sending love to all the people that you live with, sending love to all the family and friends that maybe had to cancel their travel plans who you were expecting to see and now can't, sending love to your neighbors, sending love to your city, all of humanity, because this is really the time when we need a lot of love and to connect and to just come together and unify against all of this craziness that's going on. So I hope you enjoyed that little meditation. I'm going to move on to the learning. So I have to mention that this is for educational purposes only. I am not a doctor. The suggestions or products discussed are not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease. Um, so please, obviously, if you're probably following what your COVID symptoms are. So if you're feeling any of those, call telehealth first, and then they will guide you along the rest of that. Um, okay, so here we go. So I wanna start off by talking about the importance of getting rid of chemicals in your home. Why it is important is the big thing we're going to talk about. So um, I'm gonna give you some tools also about what to get rid of and where to start. And I promise you, it might sound scary to start, but I'm going to guide you through it and leave you with some simple changes you can make, which over time will lead to big results. So first of all, I think it's actually um, fascinating and also somewhat angering to know that when it comes to the products on our shelves, it is really up to us to police them. There's no set regulation when it comes to labeling. There is something like 100,000 chemicals that are on the market today, and they're in our shampoo, our products, our cleaners, our couches, even our kids' pajamas. And the Toxic Substance Control Act of 1976 has grandfathered these chemicals in. What does that mean to you and me? 
Well, simply put, these chemicals have not had any safety testing and we know very little information about their side effects. And of the chemicals that have been tested, toxic labeling is only required if 50% or more of the animals that have been tested die. And also under the TSCA, that Toxic Substance Control Act, manufacturers are protected by secret trade laws that allow them to keep their ingredients lists a secret. For example, fragrance is a catch-all term, which could include something up to like 3,000 chemicals that companies do not have to divulge. They can just label fragrance. It's kind of scary. And this really leaves, it, leaves us at risk because we just don't know enough about these products to make informed decisions. We live in a world right now where there's a lot of greenwashed things and words like organic and natural are just thrown around, but basically they really have no meaning behind them unless you see specific signs on the labels and specific like logos. And the thing is, this is all preventable. And when you know better, you do better. So now, with all this in mind, I want you to think about the following statistics. Since the 1940s, prostate cancer is up 200%, thyroid cancer is up 155%, brain cancer is up 70%, breast cancer is up 60%, and childhood cancer is up 35%. And the American Cancer Society estimates a 50% rise in cancer rates by 2020, which is now. <laughs> the quality of air inside your home is five to seven times more toxic than outdoor air quality. So remember this because now we're all stuck inside for the like pretty much the entire day. We're not even really going outside besides maybe if you're going like for a walk around the block and you're like, okay, don't touch me. Don't come near me. Um, but we're not really going out of our houses. We're very much in quarantine. Huh my Instagram story thing has, I'm back, it kicked me off. Instagram live kicked me off. Um, okay, so I was talking about how the indoor air quality in your home is five to seven times more toxic than the outdoor air quality. And 50% of illnesses are caused actually by poor indoor air quality. Um, there has been a 42% increase in asthma in one decade, which is crazy. And this has been thought to be as a result of the exposure to all these chemicals that are now in our homes. One thing that fascinates me as a mom also is this thing that I kind of read um, a while ago. And it's this concept that my, what my grandmother was exposed to when she was pregnant with my mom, I was also exposed to because as girls and women, all of our eggs are already formed during that gestation period. So it's absolutely now essential that we talk about this subject because if we want our future generations to have any hope when it comes to their health, we need to talk about it. All right. So in a study conducted by the Environmental Working Group, Researchers at two major laboratories found an average of 200 industrial chemicals and pollutants in umbilical cord blood. 200 chemicals, that's a lot of chemicals. Of the over 280 chemicals in this study, 180 cause cancer in humans or animals, 217 are toxic to the brain and nervous system, and 208 were found to cause birth defects or abnormal development in animal tests, which is bonkers. Bonkers, bonkers, bonkers. What is going on with this? Okay, here we go. So what can we do? Well, we can think about living life to the fullest and to enjoy every part. We really need to think about living above the wellness line, to think about putting our effort into um, living above this line. And this uh, living above the wellness line means doing things like making informed choices and not just following blindly because everybody else is doing it. It means taking care of our health. It means really um, protecting our energy and trying to increase that energy and maintain the high energy. It means really thinking about our well-being, being proactive, really starting to embrace this idea of toxin-free living, um, thinking positively, saying your affirmations, doing your meditation, 
and then physical exercise, going outside, getting fresh air, all of that stuff is going to help to raise your vibration level and keep you above the wellness line. When we fall below the line, we're living with things like chronic illness, cancer, sickness, medical bills, negativity, fatigue, disease. We're more reactive. We're eating the junk food and the fast food and the sugar-filled foods. We're using chemical adding products on a daily basis and et cetera, et cetera. And this is really decreasing our energy vibration and our energy frequency in our body. And I think it's like when our body reaches 47 hertz or whatever energy, I don't know. I think it's hertz. I think it's hertz, 47 hertz. Um, that's when disease occurs. So we really want to make sure that we're thinking about doing these things that are keep, going to keep our health and our wellness above that line. So what can we do? How can we live above that line? Well, you've likely heard things like we are what we ate, so we can start there. Um, but isn't it funny that when you walk into the grocery stores right now, the shelves and the meat section are all empty, but all the produce section is full. People are scrambling to get the toilet paper and the Lysol and the hand sanitizer and all the packaged goods because they think those will last longer. But in reality, that is not going to fuel your body. What's going to fuel your body is all of the fresh fruits and vegetables that are still out there in the grocery stores. So go and buy those. And I know that they don't last as long, but you're gonna be allowed to go to the grocery store to pick up the necessities for the time being at least. I mean, yes, have the packaged goods for the just in case, but eat the fresh stuff now. Fuel your body now so that if it does get to a point where we actually aren't allowed to go to the grocery stores or they're closed, that's when you can pull out the packaged stuff. Knowing that you have fueled your body well ahead of the curve and then you can sustain that health through the tough time. So we can eat healthy, we can exercise, we can do our best to read labels and reduce the toxins in our home. We can be conscious about what clothes we wear and what products we use on our skin. And I personally think using essential oils can significantly contribute to living above the wellness line because they can really help with many body functions. Is this resonating with any of you guys? <sighs> so if you, as you can see, this is something we really need to be taking seriously. No one is watching your home and what you're using on yourself and your children every day, except for you. You are the gatekeeper of your home. Most of us do not know that there's an issue or what chemicals to even look for. Our homes are one of the most dangerous places for our health. They are most likely things in your home right now that you're exposed to every single day that could be killing you or at least exposing you to all these diseases that are on the rise. And it really should not be like this. There's, so one of the questions often I get is like, well, where are these chemicals? And I didn't really know until I started like looking into this stuff and through my research and kind of reading labels and learning more about this, there's about 15 to 20 chemicals that you should really be aware of that are found in the food we eat, the air we breathe, our soil, our water, and many of the conventional household, household products that we use on a daily basis. Things like shampoos, conditioners, body washes, bubble baths, lotions, scented candles, plugins, cleaning products, deodorants, cosmetics, hand sanitizers, and on and on and on and on. And these ingredients have been shown to cause disruptions in the endocrine system, skin irritations, rashes, respiratory distress, headaches, nausea, and so much more. And really they are working against your body in terms of that wellness line. So here is a list of just some of the chemicals. I have a detailed list also with more information about the specific dangers of each one of the chemicals that is found in my Natural Wellness Essentials course, which is free right now. So I will definitely pop that link into the chat on Zoom and I'll post it under this video um, in Facebook. And then I'll also post it in my stories on Instagram so that you can have access to that course right now. I've just made it free for the time being. And I don't mention this all to scare you, but just to make sure that you're aware of how much junk is in our everyday conventional products and how these can potentially be contributing to our society getting sicker and sicker. And especially now when we're all really trying so hard to 
improve our health and to maintain our health and to stay well and not get the disease. Um, and I'm not saying that these things are going to necessarily prevent you from getting COVID-19, but taking a proactive approach to this is going to help you in general boost your immune system, boost your wellness, and stay help you stay above the wellness line. So if you do contract something, you'll be able to fight it a lot more easily and quicker. Um, and I know that you know, even though I was conscious about eating organic and trying to detox my cleaning products at home, it really wasn't until I had my first child that I really started to read the labels a lot more closely and learn about all the hidden dangers lurking in our cabinets. And it's kind of crazy. And over the, the last four and a half years, I've slowly, and this is the key term, right? Slowly ditching and switching the products that we use so that now I'm confident we're not overloading our bodies with these toxins. And really it's the small changes that do lead to big results, small changes over time. So I guess my, my point with all that is really to just take it one step at a time. And this is so important for us to share with the families um, that you might work with, your own family, uh, the people that are in your lives, because it really does contribute to the overall health and well-being of your family, especially like in my case, my babies, my children, my family, my aging and elderly parents. Um, so it's just really important to keep all of this in mind. So why are these chemicals a threat to our health? Well, there, there's easy absorption. So we breathe, we absorb, and we ingest the chemicals. Like I talked about, they're in our air. They're in the things that we spray into our air. They're in our products that we lather onto our body. And then they're also on our foods. They're also produced um, in mass they're mass produced. There's billions of pounds of chemicals that are released each year. There's just too little testing. So there's really just not enough studies on all of these specific chemicals and how they interact with each other. Uh, there's a heavy use of, pe of pesticides still used in gardens and homes and also in schools, which is just totally scary. And then there's environmental persistence because these chemicals and toxins persist over decades. So it's just, Crazy, crazy. Okay, so let's just talk about fragrance. I mentioned this at the beginning of the webinar as well. The first thing that you wanna really look at when you're starting to ditch and switch your products is this term fragrance, um, because it's one of the most deceptive ingredients that we find in almost all of your products at home. Excuse me. <clears throat> fragrance is found in most personal care products, including things like sunscreen, shampoo, soap, body wash, deodorant, body lotion, makeup, facial cream, skin toners, serums, exfoliating scrubs, and perfume, of course, as well. Um, but it's also found in like cleaning products and in hand sanitizers. You've got like orange smelling hand sanitizers out there. And like things that smell like tropical flowers, like that is all fake. Um, and it's really literally in everything, even in our clothes sometimes. There is a store that was, um, they talked about it in the documentary Toxic Beauty. It's called Justice. I have never actually been in there and I will never go in there after watching that movie. Um, but have you ever noticed that sometimes your clothes have a smell to them when you're in the store? That should not happen. Or when you open the package, if you're ordering online, that's a no-no. Send it back, send it back. Um, yeah, that's fragrance, that's chemicals, synthetic chemicals. So what to look for on when you're reading a label, um, sometimes it's called fragrance, sometimes it's called perfume, sometimes it's called parfum, um, sometimes it's called an essential oil blend, uh, aroma, scent, sometimes it says naturally scented, all of these things are kind of like the catch-all category. Um, and yes, sometimes they can be naturally scented with essential oils, however, that's a whole other gamut of like a whole other can of worms because not all essential oils are created equal and some essential oils are purely manufactured in a lab so that is also synthetic that also has chemicals that you do not want on your body um, so a lot of the times when things are scented naturally um, a lot of that is because it is with a perfume grade um, or synthetic completely synthetic essential oil and so, like I mentioned before, this one term can include about 3,000 chemicals. 
And most, most websites uh, will rate this as a nine in terms of toxicity. So one and as one of the most toxic ingredients, which is crazy. And we're seeing more and more people suffering from things like chemical sensitivities because our bodies are just really so full of all these toxic chemicals. And we'll talk a little bit later about body burden, um, but it's this fragrance that's just not in perfume. It's in everything that we have. So think about even when you go to the hairdresser, well, not anymore because we're all stuck inside, everything is closed. But um, when you go to the hairdresser and they shampoo your hair, and that smell lasts for days and sometimes even weeks. Or when you have dryer sheets that they say they smell fresh for months, um, that should not be happening. We should not be having these smells last for months. That is not normal and it's not natural and it's all chemical, okay? So toxic chemicals really are making us sick. They're also affecting the way that we think and we feel. Um, Next, I want to just talk about this idea of greenwashing and our society, as you probably have realized, is moving towards more like green and natural. But this has also left us, the consumer, a little bit unsure of where to begin and unsure as to which products are truly green and safe to use. And we're now being faced with this phenomenon called greenwashing, which means that many cleaners are labeled as safe, non-toxic and green but can still contain hazardous ingredients. Why? Because there's actually no regulation when it comes to labeling, which is very scary. Um, and for me, this is really where essential oils come in and moving towards more plant-based products and away from the synthetic chemicals. And essential oils are just really very tiny molecules that can pass through the blood brain barrier, which is why we see so many effects from the essential oils when you inhale them, and when you apply them topically to your skin. Um, so next I wanna talk about endocrine disruptors specifically, but we'll just have a quick little chat about these. But many of these chemicals that are found in all of our products are considered endocrine disruptors. Um, and basically the endocrine system to make it, to really simplify it is made up of um, organs and glands that are involved in sleep, immune system, our digestion, our energy, and basically every other function of the human body in one way or another. And you can see, um, not for you guys on Instagram, but on Facebook, you can go and watch the, the video later, but on Facebook, I have a little picture of all of the different organs that are found in the endocrine system, um, basically covering our entire body, our endocrine system, like from the top all the way down to our reproductive organs. Yeah. Um, and endocrine disruptors are really chemicals that may interfere with the body's endocrine system and produce adverse developmental, reproductive, neurological, and immune effects in both humans and wildlife. And so this is scary and, and a little bit disheartening. It's actually quite sad because if you think about the issues that you're seeing in the people that you know, or that you love, and maybe even in yourself, these are big problems and they're growing, right? We are really taxing our systems. Um, and then on top of being endocrine disruptors, many of these chemicals are also known as carcinogens. And according to cancer.org, um, there are 110 known, 72 probable, and 203 reasonably anticipated human carcinogens that they know of. And these are just the separate chemicals, but then there are also the reactions that happen when you combine them. And this is actually quite a very scary thing. So let's have a quick look at that. So how do these chemicals affect us? So you might be thinking, how do they affect us? Are they really, that concerning? Like, should we really care that much about them? Maybe you're thinking things like, it's just such a small amount. Can it really make that much of a difference? Or I use these products all the time and I'm fine. Or I just buy whatever on, is on sale. And again, I'm fine. I'm not sick. I don't have any of these kind of effects that I can see on the surface. Um, and really, there's two concepts that I want to point out that kind of blew my mind when I was learned about them and made me rethink some of those kind of rebuttals that I had as well, because we all have them. The first one is the cocktail effect. And what this is, is that in isolation, a substance can be relatively safe, 
but can become harmful when combined with another substance. There is literally no way of knowing how the ingredients in our shampoo react with our body wash or our lotion, et cetera. So essentially, we're lathering all of these things onto our bodies and we're kind of like a big human experiment, which is scary. And then that brings me to the second concept, this concept of body burden. And this is the healthy until you're not concept, right? So picture yourself as a glass and you have this nice, clean, pure water, and this is your body. And then you add in a little bit of shampoo and you add in some lotion and you add in your cleaning products and you spray in some Lysol, you put some hand sanitizer in there. Maybe you put a little few drops of your perfume. Then you put your baby's baby wash in there and you add all these different products with toxic chemicals and you put stress and trauma on top of that and all the other stuff that happens in our life. And then your body decides that it just can't handle it anymore and your body shuts down. And then we get sick or we get some kind of disease that we don't want. So this means that these toxic chemicals that are found in almost every conventional product that we use accumulates in the human body and many of them even have that cocktail effect so that when two chemicals are combined, they actually create even more of a harmful effect. And over the years, we get exposed to a ton of different ingredients. Um, and this continuous exposure actually overloads our natural detoxification system and leads to a buildup of these agents within our bodies, which then leads to weaker immune systems, which we don't want right now, and our bodies getting sicker and sicker. And like even just looking at things like body issues, um, sensitivities like gut sensitivities and skin things like eczema, those are all on the rise right now. Our livers, which is our detoxification organ, our livers are so overloaded and our skin takes over some of this detoxifying. And this is why we're seeing so many of these skin issues. And I am in the process of detoxifying something I had, it's, it's going away now because I'm doing a parasite cleanse actually. Um, but I had this like eczema that popped up on my neck and my, my throat and like, on my eyes and it was going on for months. And it really was a combination of my body trying to detoxify, um, even though we use all of these toxin-free products, but then also like stress and just a reduced kind of parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest system. And all of these things that are going on right now in our world are putting us into that kind of like anxious, panicky state. So we just need to calm and relax, but then also do things that we actually have control over. So toxic chemicals are making us sick and they're also affecting the way that we think and we feel, right? So where do we start? So we really, going back a little bit to the toxic chemicals, but we really, want to think about where we want our children to grow up, what kind of world they want to grow up, we want them to grow up in and having their own families um, and really looking at the root of these kinds of diseases that are popping up more and more and increasing in their um, frequency or I can't think of the word right now. Um, but we really want to look at things like the products that we're using and the diet that we are eating, right? And what we're putting into our body as well as on, a, on our body. And like I mentioned at the beginning, looking at everything from our pots and pans, kids' pajamas, um, to all of the things that are in our shampoos and conditioners and body washes and lotions and makeups and et cetera, et cetera, Lysols and all of air fresheners, all of that kind of stuff, scented candles, all of those things. So where should we start? We don't have control over everything. I wish we did, but we don't, obviously. You can see we don't have control over that much besides what is happening right inside our family, inside our home. Right now we are in that state where we are just following along what the government is saying and doing, and we really don't have control, right? And it's kind of scary to feel out of control. Um, so we don't have control over things when we go outside of our houses even. We don't have control over who's smoking on the street. We don't have control over whose house smells like their laundry, even if you're down the street. We don't have control over you know, what other people around us are doing, but we do have control over our own home and the products that we are using. 
I have control over my what my family is using, but also what our dollars are being spent on. So now is the time you can reclaim your control. So what can we do? Well, we can buy organic. Really, it does make a difference because the pesticides which get absorbed at an alarming rate in our bodies, like within a day. So um, if you can't afford to buy everything organic, then at least making sure that you're looking at the clean 15 and the dirty dozen lists. And I'll post a website. David Suzuki, I think has that on his website. Um, the second one is we can rethink sterilization of pretty much everything uh, because we live in a very sterile world and we have a lot less exposure to different bacteria and our bodies are not able to build up the immunity. Research is showing actually that babies exposed to household bacteria are less likely to develop allergies, wheezing, and asthma. Mm -hmm. And this is not meaning synthetic chemicals and stuff, not that kind of bacteria. Rethink antibacterial soaps as well. And this also kind of goes for the antibacterial hand sanitizers. I know we all wanna stay clean and we wanna get rid of the bad stuff, but a lot of these were initially made to kill the bacteria, both good and bad. It doesn't care if it's the bad bacteria only. So they actually kill all the bacteria and that's not what we want. We really need the good bacteria to stay in our bodies and to stay on our skin and in our gut because that is what is helping our immune system. That's what helps us to um, fight things off is that good bacteria. But the antibacterial soaps and the antibacterial um, like uh, hand sanitizers, all of that kind of stuff is actually killing the bad bacteria bacteria as well as the good bacteria. So we don't really want that. Um, and things like triclosan and um, a lot of the hand sanitizers out there are, the alcohol is, is denatured with isopropanol. So look that up. You definitely want to try to avoid that whenever possible. Um, and actually like the FDA is starting to ban some of the ingredients and the toxins that are in antibacterial hand soaps because they found that they weren't working anyway. Um, so if you have some of those in your home, just look at the ingredients, read the ingredients, scan them. I'll show you, um, there's a Think Dirty app. You can scan using that app to see where it rates on a scale of zero to 10. Zero being good, 10 being like, Ugh, throw it out now. Um, but even just, yeah. So anyway, replacing those with just natural soaps, such as like, we really like the Thieves Hand Soap from Young Living in our house. That's what we use. And we also use the Thieves Hand Sanitizer in our house, which is currently out of stock because everybody's stocking up. Um, but the beautiful thing with the hand sanitizer is it does have 65% alcohol, but the alcohol is denatured with peppermint essential oil. And so instead of being denatured with that isopropanol, which has a lot of kind of toxic, it's a toxic chemical that's like really not good for your health. Look that up. Um, and so because it's denatured with the peppermint oil, it's better for our health. It's actually leaving a protective coating on the skin, which gets rid of the bad bacteria, but keeps our good bacteria in our body. So that's kind of cool. And it doesn't leave your hands like sticky or gooey. And it leaves your hands really nice and smooth and kind of like almost moisturized, which is nice, especially now that we're like literally washing our hands and hand sanitizing all the time, right? My hands are so dry right now. Um, not that that dry, but I've been using all of my nice moisturizing soaps and, and um, hand sanitizers. So they're a little dry still though, because we're doing it all the time. And then the last thing is really to think, rethink about what you're putting on your skin. And really, like I've mentioned, the skin is full of the bacteria, that good bacteria that we want. Um, and it's part of the microbiome that's in your body that's really helping your immune, that's like your immune system, right? That's what's gonna help you fight things off. And think about every time you put something with chemicals on your skin, whether it is your conventional hand sanitizer, makeup, shampoo, body wash, or lotion, it could be the Lysol that you're spraying in the air. It could be the Febreze or air fresheners that you're spraying your home with. It could be your conventional cleaning products. Maybe it's the clothes that you're buying that are actually made with GMO cotton um, or have been washed with chemical laden laundry detergents. That's also going to affect everything. Um, those are all going to have a huge effect on your health. Hey, Sinai. Hey, Marge. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, Elaine. Oh, yay. Hey, Maggie. So many people watching. Awesome. I love it. Um, 
so I know that this is a lot of information and this is a process. So I don't want you to get rid of everything in a day. It takes some time. It takes some learning. There is a lot of information out there and knowing what to look for is so important. So some of my favorite resources are um, the following here. You can take a screenshot here, but I'll just list them for the people that don't see the screen. Um, David Suzuki's Dirty Dozen Ingredients. You can Google that and really read about what and why. Um, the Environmental Working Group website uh, is the website that rates these ingredients. Now, I did just hear that this website has been bought out. And so it's a little bit more sketchy. Um, and maybe not as rigorous of a resource anymore. So I'm waiting to kind of see and learn if there is a better resource that's going to be coming out there uh, made available. Um, so just take that with a grain of salt. It's still a good website to go and look at your ingredients, but um, there have been some, I guess, things where people have been looking at things like Lysol ingredients, and they're saying that they're not as dangerous as they are, which is kind of crazy. Because when you look up each individual ingredient, it is very dangerous um, or harmful. Anyway, there's also the Think Dirty app. Um, and then just start scanning the products in your cupboards and your vanity kind of like place. Um, so what are some first steps? Well, you're already here, you've already started, you are listening to me babble on and on and on about my passion of toxin-free living. Um, so you've already made the first step, yay, congratulations. You have shown that you're open to learning about these chemicals, which then helps you to avoid them. And it helps you to stop using products that have in them, have these chemicals in them. And as a result of that, then you are taking control over your health and your wellness or starting. You're taking the first step and that's really where it starts. So you start small, you start slow, start with what you're convinced on. And a simple first step is really to start reading the ingredients of the food that you eat and the products that you're using. And there's a saying of, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. However, sometimes, and this is good um, for foods and stuff, but sometimes on the products, like things like jojoba oil, which is actually really beneficial for your skin, has like the Latin name that is hard to pronounce. So just be careful with that. But they'll usually have like jojoba, jojoba oil in brackets next to the Latin name. So just be wary of that um, kind of phrase of like, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it or don't use it. Um, but this also doesn't mean that you can't necessarily have ice cream in it. <laughs> even though it's not so healthy for you and we all know that but just try to go for the ice cream that has less ingredients so the one that's made with like milk and sugar and eggs and vanilla instead of like the 35 or 50 ingredients that you really can't pronounce that, that you know are not some natural um thing um yeah so that's that and then my suggestion really is to focus on the things that you're using most often during the day every day so think about things that you're using like in the first 30 minutes of your day um, and what is really having a cumulative effect. So maybe your hand cream, maybe your, your um, face wash, maybe your body wash, maybe your shampoo if you're shampooing every day, you know, those kinds of things. And look up their rating with the app. If they're an eight or above, just throw them out. If they're like a five, six, seven, maybe you're using that until it's empty and then you're just thinking you're trying to think better in terms of what to buy for next time. Um, some of the biggest offenders in terms of chemical, toxic chemical filled things are things like your conventional laundry soaps, your dishwasher soap, um, cleaning supplies. So Lysol and all the other things that you probably bought and stocked up with. Scented candles are a big one and plugins. Um, and also dryer sheets. So get rid of those things. Start to ditch and switch those first because those have the most kind of concentrated, usually toxic chemicals in them. So yeah, there's that. Um, okay. So what do I choose? So I, and how did I start? So I actually choose Young Living and this is what we use in our home. And I actually started with the essential oils kit because the oils were really my gateway into this overhaul into toxic free living. Remember when I told you guys at the beginning of the webinar that I was going to get 
fertility um, acupuncture treatments and my acupuncturist gave me this little bottle of juju oil um, and I was hooked. <laughs> and so that started me on this whole train of reading and researching and learning more about it. And now like five years later, I am just totally in love, totally convinced. And I use them every single day. My whole family uses them every single day. I pretty much believe the saying that there's an oil for that, um, for pretty much everything. Unfortunately, there's not quite one for, well, I'm not even going to say that. <laughs> anyway. Um, and ultimately I want you guys to know that I am not perfect. And like, we did not ditch and switch everything all at once. And I'm still working on getting some things of my husband's um, to ditch things like his toxic shaving cream, aftershave, cologne, all that kind of stuff. But it's small steps, things that I have control over. And I'm just not gonna worry about the other things that I don't have control over because remember there's that cumulative effect. So if you're doing a, an overhaul of kind of your main things that you're using on a regular basis, that means that you're reducing the toxic load on your body, which means that your body can actually do what it does like it's supposed to do in terms of detoxifying so that when you do put things that might have some chemicals in it, your body can detoxify it much more easily than if you were just lathering more and more and more and more and more. Does that make sense? I hope so. Anyway, so small changes. And for me, I really tackled my kids stuff first, the things that we use daily as a family. And now I can really say that we've replaced um, all of our kids stuff in our cleaning products to using young living, young living products. And um, for the most part, it's all young living. There might be like one or two things that are more just natural products because I couldn't find. Um, sometimes young living goes out of stock of things and then I have to replace, but um, yeah. Um, and I'm slowly actually starting to replace our supplements and my makeup. There's a lot of toxins in makeup, which is crazy. Um, so I use Young Living has makeup and supplements as well. So I might as well just add that all onto my monthly order. Um, so the Thieves line is actually a really wonderful cleaning line. And this is one of my favorite products that Young Living makes, um, is actually the Thieves household cleaner and all the other Thieves products as well. I have all of them. I love all of them. We use all of them pretty much on a daily basis. Um, and they have a really wonderful kind of cleaning product line, which is the Thieves line. Um, I just wanted to take a quick moment to just talk a little bit about cleaning because it's something that is, we do all the time. And I think we're all in that mode right now of like upping our cleaning regime. Um, so Canadians spent more than $275 million per year on household cleaning products. We also know that 3 million Canadians have asthma, approximately 3 million. Asthma costs Canadians 12 billion per year. Mm. We also know that there's a general agreement that exposure to home cleaning chemicals in industrial and household cleaning products can cause asthma, things like bleach, air fresheners, furniture polish, etc. And like, just think about the things that you're even seeing in daycares and schools, like the bleach and all the things that they're cleaning with and Oh, anyway, that's a whole other thing to tackle. Um, but we really have to be considering what we're using when we're cleaning, especially now with this health pandemic that we have on the rise and especially around our kids and your pets and elderly aging parents whose respiratory systems are not working so well. So just really think about what's in your cleaning products and knowing again that there's no regulation for labeling and according to the Environmental Working Group, just 7% of cleaning products adequately disclose their ingredients and their contents, which is kind of scary. Um, and you can go and look that up on ewg.org um, backslash guides backslash the backslash cleaners. Um, so yeah, so just think about it. Isn't it strange that we wipe our counters, oven sinks, dishes, et cetera, with toxic chemicals to get them clean and if your cleaner has a poison or a corrosive sticker on it would common sense not force you to ask the question of what is really more dangerous the natural things that are occurring in nature for example plants or essential oils even because those come from plants 
or these chemicals that you're using that have been made in a laboratory that are in our cleaners, right? Anyway, so what my family has done and what we've chosen is that we have replaced all of the cleaners that we have with Young Living for that Young Living um, Thieves household cleaner. And it really is that simple. That's all we use. My, we have a house cleaner that comes. Um, and literally when I first gave her just the bottle, it's an all purpose cleaner. You can you do everything. You can do your counters, you can do your floors, you can do your toilets, you can do your mirrors, you can do your windows, you can do all of it. Um, she was like, uh, what? I think she still thinks it's a little weird, but it's all good. <laughs> I told her that's all we have. I'm not buying anything else. Um, the Thieves Cleaner is formulated with 100% plant and mineral-based ingredients. It's biodegradable and it also complies with EPA standards. Best of all, it is safe for infants, pets, and even those with sensitive respiratory systems. And it costs less than a dollar a bottle and you can use it to clean your entire home. And the reason why it costs less than a dollar a bottle is that really this is so concentrated that one capful of the Thieves Cleaner to 30 capfuls of water is all you need. So a whole big bottle of Thieves Cleaner should last you months and months and months. And as a side note, a lot of the cleaners that you're buying at the store, your conventional cleaners are primarily water. So just keep that in mind. Um, okay, so now what? So I've given you all this information, but what do you really do with it? Full disclosure, I am a Young Living distributor and I love their products. In case you haven't already noticed, I love toxin-free living. I love essential oils. If you've been following me, you know that. Um, we have switched almost all of our products over time to Young Living products. And I initially signed up with Young Living as a wholesale member because I wanted to pay less money um, and really save that 24% off retail price. It's kind of like buying your Costco membership, right? Shopping at Costco to save your money. I actually initially had zero intention of being part of the business and truthfully was very turned off by the whole network marketing thing. But since then I have done my research. I have learned a lot more about what network marketing really is. And I have fallen in love with the products and I just started sharing my love for these products. And now this is one of my businesses. So here is why I choose Young Living. Many of Young Living's products have multiple uses. For example, I brush my teeth with the Thieves toothpaste and I also use it as a, de a deodorant. Um, the household cleaner has many uses. We use it for cleaning, but I also use it as a stain remover in our laundry. I've also put it in our dishwasher on occasion when we run out of dish soap. Um, so it has lots of uses. Essential oils can be used in endless DIY projects, authentic body sprays, hair and body care, and a gazillion other recipes, and we use them on a daily basis. I actually make a face serum that I use every day with essential oils and some other fatty oils. Um, I make my husband a face cream that he swears by and loves. I make all sorts of different things. We even make our own sunscreen using essential oils and other things, obviously. Um, Young Living is the real deal. They have been around for 25 years. They are what started this whole essential oil kind of trend that is now going on. Um, they really are a company that has authentic integrity. They, their ingredient lists are full disclosure and there's always new research that's coming out. So they're constantly changing and reformulating and upgrading their products, removing ingredients that might not be the best um, currently, or if there's any that have been shown to be questionable, they just reformulate. They're always researching and redoing and re, um, trying to keep up with the times, I guess, and all of the new research that's coming out. Um, Young Living's founder, Gary Young, has been quoted to say, I don't make products for a profit, I make them for a purpose. And it really is true. Um, he is, he, the whole company, you can just feel it. They just really care about all of their members and about humanity and the communities where they have their own farms and they partner with farms. Like they really care about the people. Um, so it's, it's a nice feeling. Um, Young Living essential oils really last a long time because you only need one to two drops because they are so concentrated because they're authentic, high quality essential oils. You don't need like 15 drops of the oil that you bought at Walmart um, and they can be used for a lot of things. Um, 
and they're not just using oils. They don't just have oils. They're actually a very like a wellness company with many, many, many products. Um, yeah, so it's really cool. And then also, um, I really just love, I mentioned they are just the community of all of the members is positive and uplifting and so supportive and just really wonderful. And I want to just take a quick moment to talk to you guys a little bit about transfer buying and this concept of transfer buying. And I'm aware of the time and I'm going to wrap things up very, very shortly. We're almost at the end. I promise, stick with me. Um, thank you for all of those that have been here from the start. We're almost done. So I never want money to be a factor for somebody to not be able to use safe products. And it's not about spending more. It's actually about spending your money better. Everybody is spending money all the time. If you go and you look under a sink, look at how many bottles you have that are under there. Maybe half are used, or maybe you even have unused bottles of cleaners, or maybe in the bathroom, you've got shampoos or hand soaps or whatever. We want to start replacing things with good safe options and the thing about young living products is that they are very concentrated like i mentioned so even though, though the bottle might look small um, or you might initially think of the cost as high the amount of time that you can use that one bottle once you start diluting it properly or you use smaller appropriate amounts it actually will last you three to six months versus just one month maybe with the conventional shampoos or lotions or cleaners or whatnot. Um, so you're not actually paying more, you're just shifting your spending slightly. Does that kind of make sense to people? Um, and in general, Canadians are spending about $1,600 annually on products that might be making us sicker or contributing to this concept of body burden. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, and Young Living has an awesome monthly wellness program. It's called the Essential Rewards Program that helps you make the most out of your switching and ditching of conventional products in your home. And this is how I started. This is what I'm still on. This is, I literally, it's amazing. I'm going to tell you just a little bit about it. So with essential oils, you're going to get between 10 to 25% off of each order in points. And I'm not talking like Shoppers Drug Mart points where you need like thousands and thousands of points to get like $5 off your next purchase. Um, one point equals one US dollar, about. And each product has a point value associated with it. Um, and so you get 10 to 25% of that point value back in points to be used on products of your choice on your next order or on, I like to save mine, like right now I have 200 points to use the way I want, which is like the equivalent of $200, which is crazy. Um, you can control your order. You can change it up anytime. So you order what you want, when you want. And then they also have monthly promos that help to support that ease into the transitioning. And each month they have like really cool things specific to that month. So, um, sometimes they have like more spring cleaning things. Sometimes they have emotional, sometimes they have romance, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I've been on this rewards program now for three years and I'm currently getting 25% back from each purchase in points that I can use for free products. I'm also getting free promotional items with all of my orders. And a lot of the oils that you see behind me have actually been for free through these promotional products. It's really cool. I bought a lot of them too, but I would say about half are from my free promos. Um, and so not only can I completely trust the products that are coming from Young Living because I trust their integrity and they have this, um, promise which is seed to seal um, and I trust that they're plant-based and they're not full of all these icky chemicals that I've been talking about but I am also getting points that I can use for free, free products and in 2019 I used more than $500 US dollars worth in points uh, for more products that we use on our family all the time on a daily basis just by making my normal monthly purchases for things like shampoo, body wash, lotions, supplements, cleaning supplies, makeup, and of course, my love of essential oils. So that is really cool as well. So getting started is super easy. You can order Young Living products online, which is super helpful right now with all of our social distancing and all of the other brick and mortar stores that are closed. Um, you just go to www.youngliving.com, you select the country you live in, and then you make an account. And if you use my member, uh, my member number, 
which is basically the same thing as like an affiliate link or an affiliate number. If you use that as a sponsor and enroller number, so my number is 169-2595, then I get a small commission from every purchase that you make. Yay, you're supporting small business and you're supporting local. Me, thank you. 